Lorenzo de' Medici's panic-filled screams shattered the leaden silence of the cathedral of Santa Maria del Fire. Again and again, the man who would go down in history as the Magnificent called out the name of his brother Giuliano. Only with great difficulty could his companion stop him from opening the heavy bronze door of the sacristy to look for his brother. It would have been the death of everyone who had barricaded themselves in here. Giuliano was long dead by then. He had been stabbed 19 times by Francesco de Pazzi and Bernardo Bandini Baroncelli. Lorenzo himself had only just escaped with his life. An attacker's knife had wounded his neck. The conspirators around Jacopo de Pazzi probably assumed that the wound was deep enough for the head of the Medici family to be to death. They were wrong. Lorenzo only suffered a superficial wound. Still entrenched in the sacristy, the desire to take cruel revenge for the darkest day of his life must have matured in him. The so-called Pazzi conspiracy, which was intended to end the Medici rule over Florence, ended in a bloodbath of the assassins. Around 80 people were executed. Lorenzo's wrath even reached as far as Constantinople. The assassination took place on April 26, 1478. It was Easter Sunday of that year. However, its roots went back to 1473. At this time, the Medici were still the Pope's bankers. However, Sixtus VI sat on the throne of St. Peter. He was a man who was hostile to the Lords of Florence. Lorenzo had inflicted a serious embarrassment on the Prince of the Church when he succeeded in getting his brother-in-law, Rinaldo Orsini, appointed Archbishop of Florence against Sixtus' will, who preferred Francesco Salviati, who would later become Archbishop of Pisa, this time against the will of the Medici. Salviati was related to the Pazzi family, who also ran a bank. They were not only rivals of Lorenzo and his younger brother Giuliano in this respect, but also wanted to break the Medici's political dominance in Florence. Originally, a marriage was supposed to ease the situation. A member of the Pazzi family had taken Bianca de' Medici as his wife, but this did not bring the desired peace. In 1473, the Frege situation completely broke. The Pope wanted to buy Imola from the Milanese Duke Galeazzo Sforza in order to strengthen the power of the Papal States in the region. However, as the fortress was located on the trade route between Florence and Venice, Lorenzo was also interested. He offered 100,000 gold Florence. As the Pope's banker, he knew that Sixtus would not be able to beat this amount if he did not receive a loan. He therefore made the Pazzi promise not to grant a corresponding loan. However, the Pazzi broke the word and gave the Pope the money. The latter was able to acquire Imola for 40,000 ducats and the promise to look after Sforza's illegitimate daughter Caterina. The Pope sent Girolamo Riario to Imola as governor. It was not only Niccolò Machiavelli who wrote the most important source for the Pazzi conspiracy, who saw him as the forerunner of Cesare Borgia, who would go on a papal conquest a few decades later. The Pope subsequently withdrew his account from the Medici's, handed it over to the Pazzi Bank, and issued a series of economic privileges for his financial backers in order to strengthen them in Florence. It had only limited success. The Medici bank fell into economic difficulties while the Pazzi bank flourished. However, it was not enough to weaken Lorenzo and Giuliano sufficiently. In turn, the two Medici brothers clung ever more tightly to power and pushed their rivals completely aside. 
Francesco de Pazzi therefore came up with the idea of an assassination. The Medici were to die. In addition, the Pazzi were to occupy all the important buildings in the city in order to gain immediate political control. It was not until 2004 that it became known exactly how this was to work. Federico de Montefeltro, the Duke of Urbino and Papal General was intensely involved in the events. He agreed to position 600 soldiers outside Florence to bring the troops at the right moment. Sixtus knew that there were plans to end the Medici rule. He approved of the idea and announced that he would look mercifully on those who did so. The extent to which he knew that Lorenzo and Giuliano were to die is disputed. Two versions have been handed down. Firstly, he is said to have said that he approved of the plans as long as no one was killed. Secondly, he is said to have stated that due to his office, he could not support plans that led to the violent death of Christians. He was therefore not allowed to be privy to such plans, as otherwise he would have to forbid them. Today, the second version is considered the more likely, as the Pope had largely given a free hand in this way. The first version comes from Giovanni Battista de Montesecco, who was originally chosen to kill Lorenzo. He is therefore only partially trustworthy. The hardcore of the conspirators were the Pazzis, although the head of the family, Jacopo, was initially reluctant, Francesco Salviati, and probably also Girolamo Riario, although opinions differ as to the extent of his involvement. He was to escape with his life, which suggests that Lorenzo at least did not consider him to be a major mastermind of what ha had happened. The church was not actually chosen as the place where the brothers were to die, as Montesecco refused to commit an act of bloodshed on holy ground. The night before, there was a celebration at Lorenzo's house. Some conspirators, unknown to the Medici, were to gain entry disguised as monks and ensure that the brothers would drink from poisoned goblets. However, the conspirators had to abandon this plan Giuliano had fallen ill and stayed away from the celebrations. Had he remained alive, he would have saved the Medici's reign. Even worse for the assassins was the fact that the younger Medici brother did not want to come to the church the following day either. This was intended as plan B for the assassination. It took Francesco de Pazzi all his powers of persuasion to get him to appear after all. However, the conspirators now faced a setback. Montesecco and his men ultimately refused to take part in the assassination attempt in the cathedral. Two priests, paid by the Pazzi, therefore had to step in. They were charged with the attack on Lorenzo. In front of the church, brothers were to be weighed in safety. Francesco hugged the two brothers to signal peace and friendship. Allegedly, however, this gesture was also secretly used to check whether Lorenzo and Giuliano were wearing armor under the cloth. It worked. Lorenzo was convinced that he and his brother would be safe in the church. The signal to strike off was the sound of the bell indicating the changing of the wine and bread into the blood and body of Christ. Those present would kneel down at this moment to pray and could easily be stepped in the back. When the appointed signal sounded, the men struck, but now they were to face the consequences for the fact that Montesecco and his men refused to take part. Neither the priests nor Francesco de Pazzi were up to the task. Lorenzo was able to defend himself easily against his attackers. Giuliano died, but Francesco suffered a serious wound to his leg during the attack, which he had inflicted on himself. Lorenzo was therefore able to be brought to safety in the sacristy. Francesco was to be ruled out for further plans due to his injury and went home to receive medical treatment. The assassins actually wanted to occupy all public buildings, as I have mentioned, including the Signoria in the Palazzo Vecchio. 
Salviati was supposed to overpower the Gonfaloniere here, which was a kind of mayor. But he failed in a duel and was imprisoned in a room with banned door bolts, from which he was therefore unable to escape. His co-conspirators were therefore unaware that two important elements of their plan had already failed. As Lorenzo was alive, they still did not control the city government. They left the cathedral and shouted freedom, freedom in order to inform the population and win them over to their side. This was a fatal mistake. The Pazis had completely misjudged the attitude of the people. They were loyal to the Medicis. The events in the church spread like wildfire and triggered enormous anger among the population. Lorenzo had made it home by now. One of those present in the sacristy had climbed up the internal stairwell to the singer's gallery and had been keeping an eye out for when it would be safe to leave the sanctuary. The surviving Medici brother was to remain in his palazzo for the next 10 days for fear of further assassination attempts. However, he was visited here by the angry crowd which he incited further. Lorenzo reminded the people of the good deeds his family had done for Florence. There were constant outbreaks of violence on the streets. Not only the conspirators were killed, but also people who were only accused of being involved in the events. More than 30 people died on the day of the assassination. Francesco de Pazzi was dragged out of his house and hanged at the Signoria. Jacopo had originally escaped from Florence, but was caught just one day later and also hanged at the Signoria and then dragged naked through the tr streets. Salviati shared the fate of the two Pazzi. Lorenzo, however, had the whole family and their allies persecuted mercilessly. Nowhere in Italy were they safe. Death awaited them in Florence. Machiavelli describes the bloodlust of the people against the Pazzi in the following words. The limbs of the murdered were seen being carried around on the points of their weapons or dragged through the streets. Outbursts of hatred were heard everywhere. Cruel acts against the Pazzi were seen everywhere. But this was not enough for Lorenzo. Everyone called Pazzi had to change their name. All memories of the family were erased in Florence. Only one family member was allowed to survive, Bianca de' Medici's husband, but he too had to go into exile. Montesecco had been caught and informed of all plans in detail. This gave Lorenzo the cover he needed to continue hunting down everyone involved. The confession spared Montesecco from getting hanged as well. He got beheaded instead. Bernardo Bandini Baroncelli had made it as far as Constantinople, but was not safe here either. Lorenzo obtained his extradition from the Ottomans. He was brought back to Florence in the Ottoman clothing he was wearing at the time of his extradition, and he was hanged on December 29, 1479, in this very cloth. The sketch of the execution shown here is by a young and upcoming artist you might know, Leonardo da Vinci. However, the outbursts of violence in the city following the assassination attempt went so far that it became too much even for Lorenzo. He tried to save innocent defendants from death, but failed several times. Because of Salviati's execution, the Pope imposed an interdict on Florence. In addition, the King of Naples declared war on the city as he regularly acted as commander for the head of the church. Lorenzo made a remarkable move. To save Florence from war, he extradited himself to Naples and managed to reach a diplomatic solution within three months. King Ferdinand was very impressed by the Medici's courage. Lorenzo now ruled unchallenged in Florence. All his political opponents had been eliminated. The family also received an unexpected surprise. Giuliano had fathered a son with a mistress shortly before his death. Lorenzo took him in, had him educated and helped him to a remarkable career. 
Giulio de' Medici became Pope Clement VII. However, the church remembers him only reluctantly as it was he who lost the unity of the church in the West against Protestants such as Martin Luther. The Golden Age began for Florence culturally and economically under the Medici monarchy. However, the family was severely weakened and had lost much of its moral authority. The events, which appeared to have been carried out with Lorenzo's will or even at his request, were too brutal. The foundations for the interim end of the family, family's reign had been laid despite its prosperity, even if no one could see it at the time. <laughs>